This is Camp Kennedy. God, the Aldabs are gorgeous. Some Aldabras. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? You guys like giant tortoises? And there's a uh, Bernie in the back. We call him the Bernie. One. Yeah. He's a glop. Yeah, he's a glop. So he's a different pen. Have you had him a while? I raised him from a hatchling. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, 30 years old. He's 30? Yeah. Wild. Handsome fella. Huh? He is. Look at that shell. Beautiful. Look at that handsome dude. Gosh. So awesome, man. All right, where are we going? You're like a mad scientist. What are we doing? Well, I'm sure you this project here. When he says project, I get a little nervous. You know he's up to something. What is going on can you here? Take that out, Kenan. Yes, I can. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. These look like galops. Wait, there's an Aldabra. No, they're Aldabras. My bad. What's going on here? And the one that I need to show you is here. Uh-oh. Come on, baby. It's an interesting story, but if we drag them out... All right, let me go get them. Do you mind? No, no. I hope you don't hurt yourself. No, I'll just go low. This is why you go to the gym, kids. I'm gonna turn them. Like wrestling an alligator. Not even close. Come over here. Oh. All right. There we go. Walk out there. He's just gonna go this way. There you go. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Let's go. Focus in on his back legs. So what's happening with this guy? Well, there was a person down in South Africa selling all of these tortoises. All in these, South Africa? In South Africa, selling all of these uh, Aldabra tortoises. Okay. And you got to watch his back legs. There you go. Oh. He's kind of got some problems that we see sometimes with galops. Right, but he'd gotten sick, and that's the reason he ended up with these... Uh, um, splayed out splayed, legs. Splayed legs, exactly. Anyway, the way the story goes on this guy is, we went down there, We there's a, a fellow there, and he'd gotten sick, and he wanted you know get rid of his collection, so you know, uh, we went down there and we, and we bought it. And so there's uh, eight females and, and this fellow here. Now, initially, back when he was in Africa, th those legs didn't move at all, they just dragged. Really? Just dragged. He dragged, he, he just, just walked with him. his front legs. He just dragged, he just pulled himself with his front legs. And he's got a lot of little incidental shell damage and right. stuff like that. His head was so sunken in. I have pictures and videos of this. His head was so sunk in, you can you can see his the shape of his skull actually. Right, you can still see a little bit here. Yeah, but he, he looked like a prune, right? Oh man. So, you know, the, these tortoises were expensive, but the problem that well the thing is is that these are tortoises that can be re-exported because you have the papers. A lot of times, just because you have an Aldabra or a Glop doesn't mean you can export that animal. Okay. If you don't have legal history, legal documentation, that animal came here or was hatched here or born here. And a lot of people neglect to do the thing and, and get that documentation, you know? So, because I have this documentation, if somebody bought it for me, I give them the documentation, they could re-export these animals. Increases the value a lot because there's a tremendous export marketplace. Okay, So yeah. it's global. You, yeah, so if you, you know, if you talk about it from an investment standpoint, it's, it's amazing. So all these girls came and, you know, these, this guy had these animals in a, in a very small area. There wasn't a, a green thing or a flower around. I, I think when I fed him here, I, th I think they went to, to heaven. <laughs> they, they, I, I'm sure they did not recognize some of the foods that I gave them. Because they didn't even hardly eat them to begin with. Because this is a holding pen. I mean, they right. get to go out into right. the main yard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they see a lot of green. So, you know, even grazing, there, there was no grazing, you know. Right. So, the thing is, is that they really came along, you know, doing a nice job. Anyway, when I was down there, I saw this guy. And, you know, they wanted, you know, still a, a good sum of money for this guy. Right. Which was totally ridiculous. Because of his health. Because of his health. I mean, yeah. you, you know, I could never buy that animal as a, as a breeder or a wholesaler or uh, as, as, uh, as myself on the farm and, 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 and sell that animal. That, that can't even walk. You can't give somebody a sick animal right. You know, right out of the gate. Yeah. 
So I said, no, we don't want him. So then I make an arrangement and we go back again. He's still there. And then I say, you know, how much do you want for this guy? Blah, 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 blah. I couldn't leave him there. Because to leave him there to me was like signing his death warrant. He's going to die. Right. There's no way he's going to die. The master now is, is becoming out of the picture. He's sick. And all he has is some workers, you know, who, who try to do a good job with the animals. But this guy being taken and left alone in a corner, in a compound somewhere in South oh, Africa. Man. It's very he, sad. He, he's yeah. going to die. So I took him on. We work extensively with him. And now you get to see he, he's actually moving his back legs a little bit. That's really good. Yeah, his name is Otto. Otto. Yeah. Cool. His name is Otto. What do, you, what do you think the problem was with Otto? I don't know why he got sick, but he got sick and, and he didn't walk for years. My and God. that's the way he was. He got here, he couldn't walk. But, you know, I, I think the first thing happened was just a lack of strength. You know, whatever it was there. You know, they don't have the higher, you know, nutritional foods that they can give him and stuff like that. And what I'm doing right now to help him along is I'm going to build a, a wheelchair here. Okay. Where he has wheels underneath it. And the whole idea is that he this, this is off the ground. The back of the shell is off the ground. And what that does... It forces mistake. his hind legs to move. It not only forces the hind legs to move, but what a lot of people do when they have a situation, situation like this, is they, the, the, the torch is moving his leg like this, which is it's not a natural situation. You need that torch to start with his leg here, so he can move his leg forward yeah. and recreate the, the natural movement of the leg. If he, if, he, if he gets struggled with his legs back here, he's still always pushing like this. That leg is never going to straighten. Gotcha. So that's what we're doing now. The next step is we're going to take that, that little um, uh, wheelchair. We're going to make him a little wheelchair. We're going to get his his, um, his shell a little bit fixed up and everything. And then, you know, we'll continue with the diet we give him. You know, a lot of times we isolate him and give him his own diet. Make sure he's eating. Make sure, you know, he's Well, he's definitely along. perked up, man. And I, now you make me feel bad that I dragged him on out, you know. <laughs> but, but at least we're getting some good information. And yeah. it's really cool because, you know what, these animals, just like people, they can turn around, man. Right. If you have somebody that's caring and, right. and willing to think outside right. of the box, like you, Sam, right. um, you know, you can really get these animals' muscles that have atrophied right. uh, to start working again. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, dude. And Otto looks good, man. I like his little personality. Now, I just love Aldabras. You know, you guys remember Nostradamus uh, at my home. Well, that's the same species of tortoise as Otto here. Yeah, actually, did this project with the ZAA. Okay. You know, the, the organization that they belong with. And it's it's part of what the ZAA is, is, is so doing. What, what does that stand for, ZAA? Zoological Association of America. Okay. And so, uh, you know, everybody's heard of that other one. AZA, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah. So everybody's heard of the AZA, but not many people have heard of the ZAA. But it's a tremendous organization. Uh, they don't have the regulations put on them like they do in, in the AZA. And and what we do within that organization is, is go out and find animals that need to be saved, that need to be conserved, and, and we donate our time and our money. We take collections within our organization to go out there and help those animals. Some of those animals have been brought in, they were smuggled in, they give them to us. You know, we have a whole project where we're trying to save some of the different species uh, tortoises. Very cool. And, and turtles. So, you know, he was, he was one of those projects, also I did with the ZAA, and it's a tremendous organization to work with where they're more concerned about uh, uh, saving this animal that they are flipping a profit. Gotcha. So very cool, really man. Good. All right, everybody. Here's a little video for you, a little bonus video from Florida uh, iguana and tortoise breeders, and my friend Sam Pascucci. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, his website if you have any information. He has beautiful animals, and uh, he's definitely worth your time. See you guys later.